Salutations Araxians and welcome to Planetside 2 Sneak Peeks. I'm Margaret Crone and today I get the pleasure of interviewing Chad Lichty, who is a lead animator here at Sony Online Entertainment. So come along with me. Thank you for joining me, Chad. Thanks for having All me. Right. So I have a lot of questions for you. There are actually way more than I could even compile in this list, but I know how many I can only ask within a time frame. But I wanted to know just kind of like what you do on a daily basis, like who you are, that kind of stuff, so the people who maybe didn't get to put their questions out there and are just watching this right now uh, can kind of get get in the know. Yeah, well, I'm Chad Lichty. I'm the lead animator on Planet Side 2. And day to day, I manage the team, I give out tasks, and tracking down things that we can make look better, and uh, spend a lot of time inside a program that we use called uh, Natural Motion. It's uh, Morpheme. and uh, it's a, it's a spaghetti of wires and connecting nodes to make the animations happen when they're supposed to. And that's yeah, where I spend. it's pretty cool. It's basically like every little joint you can move and, and kind of like, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. I got to like mess around with it a little bit to check it out. Yeah. Um, so I want to kind of get into these questions. Our first question here is from Nades1247, and he wants to know, how would one get into the video game animation, and what programs do you use? Yeah, so... Uh, I got into video game animation by going to college for art, and I specialized in animation. So that's one avenue of getting into the industry. Another avenue is just picking up some animation programs and messing around on your own time and putting together a demo reel. And uh, if you're good, they'll hire you. But uh, more traditionally, you go to school. You learn from people that already know how to animate, and then you put together a reel, and hopefully you're good and you'll get a job. Yeah, so it's all up to you in that in that work. Yeah, you're just showing it to people and hoping hoping they like it. Right. Yeah, and then to answer the second part of the question, we use uh, Maya and Motion Builder for our animation. All right. Autodesk products. Awesome. Our next question here is from Stermovic, and he actually asked a ton of questions, so I only took two of his questions. Uh, one of them was, do you have any advice for starting slash aspiring 3D animators? And you kind of went over that a little bit. And any prerequisites before jumping straight into 3D? Yeah, uh, I mean, it's good to have a basic understanding of timing and just animation concepts before you would jump into 3D animation, because it gets really complicated inside the 3D package is you're dealing with not only just trying to animate something, but you know you have to have your model rigged properly so that you're going to get the deformations that you want on your character. So just animating on paper is definitely way more straightforward. You, know, you just move the lines the way you want them to move. So uh, having a good understanding of animation, either through doing stop motion or uh, traditional hand drawn would be a good place to start. Do you think most animators start kind of doing hand drawings and then move forward into like using actual different various technologies in order to um, create? Animation? Yeah, I think anyone that's in animation, when they were very young, they quickly figured out that they could make a little flip book. I love doing that. That's yeah, fun. I mean, it, if you haven't done that, then it's probably not in your in your heart. So <laughs> if it's not in your heart, don't try to become an animator because it's a lot of long, hard hours. So you really have to want it. Yeah, and in the game industry, it's a little different than sometimes when you look at uh, shows that you watch that are animated. I mean, some of those people like literally work on just three seconds of a whole movie, and they're like, that was my three seconds. And it's just insane how much work goes into that. Yeah, yeah, and you know, it, for our stuff, there's some stuff that people have ownership of, and other things that, you know, everyone's taken a shot at it and they're like, oh, I want to do this little tweak to it. And you're like, okay, yeah. So, you know, on our team, we really don't take 100% ownership of any one animation. Everyone's like, yeah, I got this idea. And let them have at it. I think that's the best way to do it because when you think of something and you're really passionate about it, you're going to do a lot, a lot better work than if you're just doing something where it's like, oh, someone gave this task to me, so now I just have to do this. Right. Whereas, like, you see someone else doing something that maybe you're interested in, if you guys could only swap, yeah. uh, it'd be a totally yeah. different aspect of the game. Yeah, it's good. Our next question here from him was, how long does it usually take to animate a new weapon? Yeah, it's uh, 
When we first started on the project, it was quite a lot of time. Uh, I would say we, it was probably about 10 weeks per weapon, wow. uh, which is a lot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now that we've got all of our systems figured out and the groundwork is laid in the networks, it's about a week per weapon, assuming that it is using the same mechanic. You know, it's like a, it's something similar to a rifle. Uh, so like when we did the rifles and then we added SMGs, that took about a week to get the SMGs animated in, in game. And then there's a little bit more time afterwards, you know, we get it in game and you know, designers look at it and they're <laughs> like, yeah, this doesn't feel quite right. So then we tweak it and you know, there's probably another 20 to 40 hours of animation just doing polish to get it to what you actually get in game. And now with the added animations um, like on the weapons, because people mm -hmm. have been seeing that with, especially it was a first, the first iteration of that was our SMGs where you could actually see pieces moving. Yeah, yeah, Did that uh, tack on some more time or was, was it just kind of something that you guys were like, this is something that we've always wanted to do? Yeah, it, you know, the, the vehicle animations and animation on the weapons are some of the more fun things to do. Yeah. And thankfully, they're actually the easier things to do. Nice. You know, because it's just, you know, just one bone moving up and down and just figuring out how are we going to make this cool with the pieces that we're given and what can we do. So, yeah, we definitely are, have some cool stuff coming. Yeah, so that. you said pieces that you're given. So are the are the artwork that you're pr provided with is that mostly like here's an here's a weapon and then you kind of have to use it how you however you can figure out or is it more like often you get to be like oh I'd really like this piece on this weapon? Yeah, it's a little bit of both. Uh, you know, when we were initially developing and just getting the game out there, there wasn't a lot of time. We had a real aggressive schedule, so yeah, there I wasn't know. a lot of <laughs> meetings where the modelers got to sit down with the animators, and we're starting to do that now. So. Uh, that's really helpful and that you'll, you'll start to see that you know as the new guns come out there's going to be more pieces on them that us animators can play with and we're adding pieces to some of the older weapons so that we can uh, embellish the animations and Yay. make them more fun so yeah there's some questions in here about that so maybe we'll delve deeper into that whenever we get yeah. there our next our, our next question here is from Jarrett Wold at Jarrett Wold on Twitter, and he wants to know, when creating animations, do you look to real-world video footage of what you're animating as a reference? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm constantly on YouTube. Uh, you know, I'll, I've got a Netflix account, so I'll pull stuff up on Netflix. If I remember a movie that I was like, oh, I think they did something like this in that movie, and I'll show it to the guys and gals, because we've got both guys and girls yeah, on the do. team we animating. And, uh, you know, that's the most helpful. When you can have something to reference and use that to animate off of, that's very helpful. Sometimes we run down the halls and replicate it, yeah. what we think we want it to look like, and videotape ourselves doing that if we can't find anything out there. Otherwise, we just got to you know make it up and wing it, and that's the hardest animation to do because it, it needs to make sense. It Otherwise, needs it doesn't to look feel realistic. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah, everyone's a really good critiquer of animation because we all watch animation every day. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, if you're, yeah. you're people watchers, I guess. Yeah, everyone <laughs> knows how things should move. So anyone can spot a bad animation. It's a lot harder to create a good animation. Yeah, it's always interesting to me because I know that you do a lot of shooting range uh, firing as well. Mm -hmm. So I was actually going to ask, do you ever like videotape you guys uh, at the shooting range to get um, some real life animation out of that? We haven't done that, but thankfully there's tons of that on YouTube. Oh, yeah. So we, we tend to just pull up stuff on YouTube. I remember when I got to work on Free Realms once, um, one of our animators, uh, Brad, he was taking a photo of my cat, like how he was rubbing up against the wall and stuff. And uh, we used that in Free Realms for one of the, one of the cat animations. It's yeah, kind of cool. Yeah. yeah, so we often do that. And we do that here in-house sometimes as well. Yeah, so definitely. it's pretty fun. Our next question here is from Jeremy at Desmano on uh, Twitter here, and he wants to know: Is mocapping worth the time and effort? Can a good animator, uh, can a good animation artist do it faster? So, I I come from the mocap world, so I'm a little biased here. <laughs> but you know, really, I think of them as two entirely different things. If there's an animation you need that is mocap makes sense. Mocap's the only th way you're going to get the results you want, and I think uh, the, the best way of describing that is uh, we, uh, when I was on 
Beowulf the movie, we mocapped horses. And you know, you, you give oh, a that's interesting. Yeah, you give a an animator a horse to animate, and you know they're going to animate the body moving around. Maybe they'll do a, a couple tail flicks, <laughs> and maybe some you know ear animation and everything. But the thing that you miss is just like how much they do that. I mean, when we had the mocap of the animals, we saw every muscle twitch. Their tails are constantly moving. Their ears are constantly flicking. Their eyeballs are moving around. I wow. mean, they're never standing still and. Sure, maybe an animator could do that, and they definitely could, but I mean, it would take them forever, you know. To make be, up all those. Yeah, because so you have to key all of that. So, you know, I think keyframe animation, it has its place, and the people that do it are really good at it, and we use a lot of that in our game, but we also use a lot of mocap in our game, and it's about knowing when to use it. So for things that are more replicatable, it's, it's much better to use mocap when you know, like, hey, this horse can do horse-like animations. We should probably yeah. use it. Yeah. Use mocap on them. I'm I'm also just interested now how you guys did that with horses. Do you actually have wires on them, or was it more like wireless, or how did that work? Yeah. So it was a they call it a passive optical system. So uh, we have reflective markers. I should have brought some in. <laughs> uh, you should have worn the jumpsuit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Would have been guys, kind of funny. They've already seen that. That's an old video. <laughs> uh, so the and you see where spandex too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the reflective markers have light coming from the cameras that bounces back to the cameras. And that's what the system sees. And you have a lot of cameras. So we triangulate the location of the markers, and then we can track them in space. So yeah, the horses had those markers all over them. And they shaved little patches and then huh. uh, glued them on. And it oh, was, no. It was fine. <laughs> the, the horses were fine. The, the Humane Society was there supervising everything. Oh, really? Yeah, wow. Yeah. That's Anytime animals aren't set, they're there. It's always interesting to me to see like what other people do for their jobs, because especially when it comes to things like that, that's like something that not normal people get to do every day. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Uh, but we should probably get to all the questions. Um, the next question here is from Jason Cop Copeland from Furious Cabbage. That's a pretty funny name. Uh, he wants to know, fellow animator here, and I believe he works for Juggernaut Games. He wants to know, do you guys utilize placeholder or proxy models at all, or do you wait for a final model to animate? Yeah, uh, proxy models are essential. Uh, and it's not just for the animators. It's, it's a really good tool for the modeling department to have. Uh, we use them, and we need to use them more, and we're continually to build our resources of the, the proxy models. And it's important because it sets the ground rules for both teams. Mm -hmm. So if we know we can expect the grip to be here on every gun, then we can animate to that. But if it's mo constantly moving, then that affects how all of our animations work. And can if, if the modelers don't know how far the, our characters can reach, yeah. then you end up with IK issues where the elbow locks out, and everyone, I'm sure, has seen a couple guns get in there yeah. where they had elbows locking out and different things like that. So um, it's really important for everyone to have those proxies, not just the animators. And it does speed up the process because we can start animating before the models are done. It's pretty awesome. I know that we also use like various different proxy models for even our environment artists, like they'll, they'll be like, oh, we'll put a little man here to yeah. see like scaling and stuff like that to kind of figure out what's going on. But yeah, we have different, different prop items in, uh, in our animation package so we can check and make sure we can see over the different cover heights because certain ones are supposed to be able to shoot over, That's other true. ones you know, you're not supposed to be able to shoot over. So we have to make sure when we do a new animation set that when they're crouched, they can actually shoot over it. Good stuff. Our next question here is from Knox, and he's one of the ReachCast uh, podcast hosters. He's a pretty cool guy. He wants to know, what is your favorite animation, and if different, which was the hardest? Yeah, that's a good question. So favorite animation. Uh, I think like the for us, like early on, the, the VS reloads were like, that was a big win when we saw those in game. It was like, oh, wow, that's sweet. I, we got to get more stuff like that. Yeah. And that's kind of been our directive right now, is just trying to give the rest of the factions more love. And the VS, of course, is still getting even better. 
with the SMGs. And yeah, they're just very else. different styles. So yeah. for you guys, it was nice to actually work on something refreshing, whereas like the other two are kind of more militaristic. So yeah, it's like you know. World War II weapons, yeah. basically. And uh, uh, so yeah, they those were fun, and they were also some of the more difficult ones. Uh, they were pretty complicated in how we handled the clip leaving the gun and being able to animate that spinning in and out. Uh, I'd say the other animations that were pretty fun and uh, uh, difficult were just the, the firing animation. Uh, we ended up breaking it up into multiple animations that we layered together so that we could give Sanchez a lot of control. States. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah, we gave him a lot of control to change how each gun felt. Mm -hmm. So there's a series of animations that have multiple variations. So you combine those all together and I mean, we essentially have like 30 different rifle combinations that he can come up with. And then when you, on top of that, change the characteristics of how the weapon works, it gives for a good variety. Yeah, wow. I remember when we first started making all the weapons, they were, it was very different because we didn't have all those animations, so everything was really stiff, like we didn't mm -hmm. have that sway, we didn't have, the way things, uh, the recoil worked was just right. weird, the animations were a little, like we weren't able to really uh, customize the time frames on those because yeah. it was like hard uh, coded in there and then we kind of like changed things up, so it's been, yeah. it's very, it's been very interesting seeing like the progression of how our weapon play is compared to like what it was when we initially started and we were all running around like proxy base. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was uh, with a lot one of class. <laughs> yeah, a lot of R and D to get that system working. Yeah. All right. Our next question here is from Pasta Nine Thousand, and now I'm hungry. <laughs> he wants to know what have you had the most fun animating, and anything you look forward to working on in the future. Yeah, kind of answered that a little bit with the last one. Uh, the, you know, I, I'll go back to the rifle fire. It was the, you know, technically and the amount of R and D and back going back and forth with the animators, figuring out how to get that rifle fire working, and, and it was back and forth with designers. You know, mm -hmm. being able to give you guys the, the variety that you needed, and uh, so it was both challenging and fun to figure that system out, which is always rewarding. Yeah. Um, and then there was a second part. Yeah, there. he wanted oh, to yeah. know if there's anything you're looking forward to in the future. Yeah, well, I mean, when I got on this project, you know, this is like my first MMO, so. Oh, wow. Yeah, really excited about live, you know, just being live and being able to constantly level up all of our stuff. Yeah. And, um, and go back and tweak and reiterate. Yeah, we've got a board in my room that just, it's like the list of what you hate the most in the game <laughs> oh right no. now. So, <laughs> and, you know, specifically animation. So everyone's expected to keep some, have something on the list that they want to fix. So That's nice. we're constantly looking for things that we can make better. And that's what I'm excited about is making the game better. Yeah, I think that's, that's a noble thing to be <laughs> looking forward to. All right, our next question here is from Andrew HC, and he's Jackalope13. He's pretty active in our community. He wants to know, when you find a silly animation or glitch, how long do you usually laugh before you figure out how to fix it? Yeah. We've had some funny ones. Yeah, uh, you know, it depends on who found it. Uh, <laughs> oh no! <laughs> you know, if it's one of the people on my team and it's not live, uh, then yeah, then we, we enjoy it and, and then we fix it. But yeah, you know, if it's a, an email from Tremel or Smed, yeah, <laughs> an email from Smed to Tremel, then to me, then yeah, there's no time to laugh. We have to get on it and fix it. Yeah. So um, anytime it's on live, I, yeah, it's not a laughing matter. It's bad. <laughs> you want to fix it quick. Yeah. Um, but if it's still on our internal test servers, then yeah, then we can laugh at it. It's fun. Um, I think there was a like a follow up with that oh, like the how long before you actually fix it oh well, which yeah. you kind of already answered depending oh, on the issue this other guy is another one. yeah so uh lance herbert wants to know and he's lanson on twitter just a simple question can you draw is being a good classic artist a requirement for the job yeah so i would not consider myself an excellent traditional artist yeah. i can draw i went to art school and i went through all the drawing classes and i enjoy it 
um, but uh, it's not my specialty. Uh, so I'm more of a what they call a technical animator. I get down into the tools, I do scripting, I do motion capture, and uh, those are my strengths. And I have other people on my team that are excellent drawers, and mm -hmm. that makes them also you know, better keyframe animators. So they work on those aspects. So, you know, do you have to be uh, good, good at drawing? No, you don't. But just know that you will probably find yourself in a different sort of position like I did, where mm -hmm. you're focusing more on the tools and uh, the technical aspects of animation. You might end up being a rigger over an animator. Unless, you know, you might just have an excellent eye for animation mm -hmm. and not an excellent eye for drawing. So you never know. <laughs> But generally, yeah, you want to be a good, good at drawing. Our next question here is from Radioactive Lobster, and he wants to know, what, uh, was the flash humping animation a bug or intentional? Are there any other funny animation bugs you've encountered? Yeah, so that was definitely a bug, uh, and uh, it was not intentional. <laughs> and it had to do with when characters were off camera and died and then would get revived. So that was, that pose was the, someone revived you and you haven't accepted it yet, and then you would get stuck there. <laughs> so yeah, then you would get on a vehicle, and that was when we had people swimming around on the floor, either on their stomachs or backs, and not standing up. Yeah, that was, that not was a good. fun bug. Yeah. Yeah, right. um, yeah and then uh, for another one that was crazy, I don't know if it ever made it on live, I think there was a video of it, so it must have gotten up there, but the entire top half of the body would collapse. Oh yeah, and, and you'd just be like a little walking a thing. Walking gun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we had a, uh, a tweet that was like, when is that coming back in? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't add it in here, but I thought it was pretty funny. Yeah, little robot guns. Yeah, they're like little mechs, yeah. no heads, just legs. All right, our next question here is from Soli NC for Life, and he wants to know, with the roadmap projected new Empire-specific run animations, what can we expect to look forward to? Well, uh, you know, the idea there is to help people pick out the enemy, you yeah. know? So the, what you can look forward to is hopefully being able to spot your enemy faster. Uh, you know, it's, it's going to be when they're running passive, you know, everyone shoots the same, so uh, that won't be any different. But if you see someone sprinting or running and they're not actively targeting someone, uh, you should be able to differentiate them based on how they're holding their weapon. And there, there was another gun, a game, I can't remember which one it was, and basically I think it was the Russians held their weapons differently than the Germans. So they did, because of their training, they put that in the game. That's awesome. And you could spot the Russians or the Germans based on how they were holding their gun when they were sprinting. So that was the inspiration. And it's a little bit harder because we have three factions. Yeah. So, you know, we're I'm trying to play into the the lore of the classes, and uh, you know, uh, VS are you know they're scientists. They they want peace. You know, so they're doing safety first, and they've got their guns a little bit pointed more down. Uh, TR is <laughs> more first. military, and you know, so they're running in more traditional military, and then uh, NC is going to be kind of in between. So NC is going to be the closest to what we currently have, and then VS is going to aim more down and TR up. Yeah, so. we do have pretty differentiating silhouettes as well. So if you yeah. kind of learn the silhouettes of each of the empires, like the NC are very boxy, the TR have kind of smoother right. out roundings, and the VS kind of have these odd shapes. You get used to it after a while, but I think the animations are going to really help. Um, yeah, definitely. Reiterate From a distance that. too, you know, because you'll have a distinct, you know, this, this, or this, and I think it'll help. Our next question here is from Seal Team, Mick Seal Team on Twitter, and he wants to know, Hey, can we expect to see more animations on the previous weapons as well as the new ones? Yeah, definitely. Uh, there's slowly we're even you know breaking up parts on some of the old weapons so that we can get animation on different pieces. Uh, we've added some pieces to weapons. Uh, this isn't on live yet for some of them, but yeah, we're. We're giving love to the old weapons. We're making cooler new weapons, and 
everything's getting pushed as far as like the quality and just like the amount of fun each weapon is. I think that everyone will <coughs> like that. Uh, something that the community has really been pushing for is that they really want to see new looking weapons and new styled weapons and the new animations that we've been putting out have been really like they've been getting them really pumped so yeah, they're yeah. looking forward to what we're going to be doing in the future. Yeah, get ready for a new lasher. Yeah, Sweet. I can't wait for the new lasher in general, like not only just on your guys' side with art, but also on the design side, we're going to be doing some passes on all the classes and that should really help yeah. with the weapon just being better to use in general. Yeah. Um, so our next question here is from Zephyr Burst on Twitter and he is Joe W. And he wants to know, what inspiration slash references do you use when animating? Example, what would you use as inspiration for the ES run animations? And you kind of went over that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, you know, we we look at other video games. Uh, we, we definitely, you know, take reference from the people that have done it right and try and learn from what they've done. So uh, we're constantly playing different games and looking at what they're doing. And, and then, you know, like I said before, YouTube, Netflix. Real life. <laughs> yeah, going to the range. Uh, and uh, yeah, for the, the ES runs, it was, you know, basically real world, you know, just how people are trained to run in different militaries is different. So we took that and just built on it. So. Yeah. Our last question for today is from Reese Holland, and he wants to know, how are animations conceptualized? Could we see, uh, could we see examples of concept sketches or thumbnails? Yeah, uh, we, on our team, we haven't done that. Uh, you know, that's something that you'll see more in feature films where they'll do storyboards mm -hmm. of uh, different scenes and, and sometimes those storyboards will have the actual poses that the director wants to see in the different shots. So for us, uh, you know, the concept guys might do some concepts of the different weapons, and uh, if, if there was a bigger budget for that, then I'm sure they would draw, you know, the guns open and all the different mechanics of the guns, but generally we just, we get a concept of the gun and then the modelers figure out how to break it up and make it function like a gun and give us as many things to play with as possible. Yeah, and even on the design side, they try to utilize a lot of those little pieces for various different guns. So you see pieces on one gun that are also part of another and whatnot. Right, yeah, we have memory constraints, so we have to be able to get as much as use as possible out of each component that we make for a gun system. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for er, taking this time to interview yeah. here and answer some of these questions that the community has. I know you guys are super busy, and we're taking up <laughs> space from his, his roomie here. He's got a... Uh, get back to work. So thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. And don't forget, you can check out all these interviews on twitch.tv slash planetside2 every Friday from 5 to 7 p.m. PST. And we do a bunch of other stuff there, too. So check it out. Toodles. Bye. Sony.